Hey there everybody, Mazarok here, and today we're going to be talking about the new Primordial Stones in 10.0.7. And with this video, we are actually going to be talking about the stones themselves, uh, as you can tell by maybe the title, or, you know, if you listened to the last video, maybe you understood the point of where I was going to. Some people didn't, that's perfectly fine. Uh, before we get into it though, please do like, comment, subscribe, all that fun jazz. Get the algorithm going, because it's been funny lately. Uh, <laughs> there was a weird crash, that things happen. There is a Twitch link down below if you want to come watch me stream, come by, have some fun. Discord link in, uh, Discord link as well, and uh, Patreon. I cannot do without my patrons, thank you so much. If you wish to support me directly, there is a link down below. So here's what we know about the Primordial System so far. Now, they are basing this loosely off domination shards right so what domination shards were was you got specific gear that had specific sockets and you could only uh, put a socket in specific gems uh so this is pretty loosely based on that now the way it seems this is going to work is it is solo instance content in 10.0.5 which i'm actually a really big fan of this idea I like the idea that anybody can just go into a solo instance dungeon and get a ring and start getting these things, right? So you get a ring that's going to have sockets in them, no secondary stats on them, because you're going to replace the secondary stats with, uh, like, you know, the replacement is secondary stats for more powerful, customizable effects. Uh, this is called the Iskara Vaults, and you can get these keys in there. It's called an explorable mini dungeon, and it's an activity within the Forbidden Reach. So I actually really, really do like this idea. Like I said, um, <laughs> uh, while many players have compared these new gems to the controversial Shards of Domination system in 9.1, yeah, it's they're kind of similar. It's not the system that bothers me, you know? It's the... Uh, it's how alike they are. Uh, it's how it reminds me of 9.1. Like, that's what I don't like about it. But that kind of is what it is. So you're going to go through and you're going to be able to get a series of gems. Now, these are randomized, which I really don't like that idea, but you can farm these. The ring is going to go up to item level 424, and there's a lot of weird powerful effects so like flame lick stone dealing damage can set the enemy on fire dealing fire damage over time there's a lot of weird little things and there's another one here that i actually really really like this one raging mama stone uh absorbing damage can coat your armor in lava calling uh causing melee damage to take fire uh causing melee attackers to take fire damage things like bear with Urzox fury warriors with ignore pain where you constantly have an absorb this is actually gonna sounds like it could be a fun thing right and the nice thing with this system is it is designed for 10.0.7, and once Season 2 rolls around, they fully expect you to uh, get rid of the ring for more powerful items, for more item level when Season 2 rolls around. This just, just seems to be something like they're testing the waters, right? How far can we get away with this system in a non-progression system? Because in 10.0.7, we're pretty much all decked out. We're kind of waiting for the new season to come along. This is just adding more fun to it, right? And there's a lot of different effects here. You are going to be able to upgrade the stones, they did say in another blue post, uh, through your jewel crafter. So if jewel crafters didn't make enough money with lariats, you're now going to be able to make a ton of money with these gems because everybody loves more powerful effects, <laughs> right? That's kind of how it works. Everybody loves more powerful effects. So, uh, that's pretty much it. You're going to be able to put three of these stones in. You're going to be able to get a fun combination of whatever you want. And because prog the progression season is kind of, is pretty much over at 10.0.7 for pretty much anyone, uh, pr pretty much most people, uh, especially at the higher end, this is just going to be something fun that you can do to add more. Um, I am slightly more excited for this, but it's always going to be tainted for me because this is always going to remind me of 9.1 and all of the like not domination shards weren't necessarily the worst thing about 9.1 for me so there's some ptsd and some therapy that's gonna have to happen but all in all it this does feel like i had said in the last video that they are learning from their mistakes and they're trying to do something a little bit more and trying to fix them and trying to make them better and that's really really good this is the blizzard that i like to see is the timing a little off or a little bit too soon I, that's a player by player person by person basis right you can't necessarily say yes or no uh there's some people that never played 9.1 that could be very very excited for this a lot of different things like that but all in all 
Uh, that's the basics of the system that we know so far. You're going to be able to queue in for uh, maybe an explorable mini dungeon activity that's uh, solo. Uh, I did remember saying this, it was an, a solo thing. I don't know if you're going to be able to go with people, but there's going to be vaults revealing chests, monsters, and puzzles hidden within. I'm actually kind of... The more that I'm reading about this and the more that I'm thinking of it, uh, it sounds like it could be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm starting to get a little bit more excited for it, and we'll see more as more is revealed. Uh, the one thing that I really hope isn't here is they don't rely fully on random chance. Uh, I would. There are some means to get deterministic. Uh, gems, but you can't buy individuals. They did state that you're going to be able to buy family of gems. So, for example, uh, with the way this is coded, it all says primordial, but you can see that there's different colors, right? So, most likely, all of the blue ones, you're going to be able to purchase a family of the blue ones. Purple, orange, red, whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't really say here. And it had I, I didn't read anything on what the families are, but you're actually you're going to be able to buy kind of a packet of gems right at once. Uh, they are unsocketable. They did learn their lesson from domination shards, so don't worry. If you just get three of them and those are the only three that you have, and you don't have time to farm out more right now, you can put them in with zero worries about having to resocket for a better one down the line or whatever have you not. The ring's going to start at 411 going up to 424 depending on the quality of these gems that you're going to be able to upgrade with your jewel crafter. All in all, that's kind of what it is. This is just going to be a quick video today. Um, that, that's pretty much it. I'm kind of starting to get a little bit more excited for these because I love the idea of solo instance content. I feel WoW has been lacking some of that sometimes. Sometimes, you know, I just want to put on a movie and just kind of chill and do some world stuff or whatever and not have to worry about group content. Uh, as much as I love keys, sometimes it's just nice to take a step back and do nothing. Put on some metal and just kind of just chill and just do some stuff. And this is a way to get some player power that isn't going to uh, matter as much within your raid progression or anything like that. But if you are struggling in that raid progression, can definitely help you guys get over the edge. So that is it today. Thank you very much for listening. Can't do this without my patrons. Thank you again. Happy tanking, everyone. Bye.